Welcome everyone to episode 21 of Pro Player Plays PJ Tour 2K21. We're here on the front nine and it is all done. We finished the ninth hole in the last episode. That's this par five right here. And I'm really happy with how the course has come along so far. We're going to do a playthrough. I'm going to have a separate episode where I'm going to do a playthrough of the entire nine. So you can kind of see what I've done. It's been over a long period of time. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of you forget maybe this first and second holes. Uh, those were probably done about five months ago. So I will definitely do an episode on that. But today we're not going to focus on the range, which is something I mentioned in the last episode. We are actually going to turn our attention to hole number 18 because I think that getting this hole down is going to be really important for the rest of the course and how I plot this back nine. Uh, mainly because I know this is what I want the 18th hole to be. And I've done a little bit of work here before, uh, before I started recording this. I wanted to just kind of get everything laid down the way that I wanted it to and just have a good idea of where this episode was going to go and how this hole was going to go. So this is going to be hole number 18 and I think it's going to be just an amazing finishing hole and I wanted to be able to dedicate the amount of space that I needed needed to have this hole come to fruition. So I've got this 12 hole finishing up up here now. I, I moved this par three a little bit because I kind of had it ending down in here somewhere and I wanted to make sure that I had enough room to place this par three where I'm coming down the hill and you've got the view of the 18th green in the background but you're also aiming at this green right here. I think that's gonna be a really cool layered effect for this 12th hole and I wanted to be able to see the 18th green put down. So I just think getting this 18th hole done is gonna really help me understand where I need to place some of these holes on the back nine. And basically 13 through 16, I don't have a great idea of what I want to do with these holes and they are very up for interpretation right now. Hole number 17, I think is going to be just a stunning par three down this hill uh, with the sun in the background going down towards the water we're going to have some kind of retaining wall green i haven't placed anything on this hole yet but i think 17 and 18 are pretty much set in stone and i really like 10 and 11 kind of going out this way and then 12 coming back down towards the clubhouse i'm pretty set on those holes so overall i pretty much know what i want this back nine to look like except for 13 through 8 or 13 through 16 rather so let's get into a little bit of what hole 18 is going to be hole 18 i think is going to be a really fun hole it's about from this tee box right here it's 230 yards to this right little section right here and i wanted to have this little piece of fairway because i'm going to plan on putting a couple bunkers maybe right in this area and maybe in this area as well so if you lay it up over to this right section you're going to have very clear angles to these left pins they might be one back here and maybe one over here as well this diagonal hazard right here where if you cover this left side it's not as long of a carry but you got a little bit longer of a shot in and it, the further you go to the right you get it up into this area you, you you cut off more of the hazard with your tee shot so it's how daring are you willing to be off the tee to get this ball up into this area to chip up to this green and i don't 100 percent know what kind of hazards i'm going to put in here i'm definitely going to put some kind of bunker or something over here to make players second guess just pounding driver over this section of the fairway i want to make this area as enticing as possible and it's going to be a really wide fairway kind of like a harbor town-esque fairway where you've just got this giant landing area that you can hit it and it's all about what kind of angle do you want to set up for your second shot so that's the idea with this hole i'm going to go now and i'm going to play some surfaces and get this hole looking a little bit more like it's going to be at the finish and I'm going to place the green down and I'm going to get the fairway that's going to wrap around here. I don't I don't quite know what I'm going to put here yet, so I'll, I'll kind of figure it out as I plant it. But um, yeah, let's get in there and let's play some surfaces.
we got the retaining wall put in here and we also I put some of the planting around it because it just looked a little bit bare and I wanted to make sure everything was gonna look good so I put some of the plants but this is nowhere near a finished product it's gonna look a lot more like over here surrounding this where it kind of hides that ugly dirt that is underneath the retaining wall that you just can't you can't quite get rid of so that was kind of the idea with that and I might put some fake water in there as well um, I'm not sold on this green but we've got it for now it's a decent placeholder I can go back and I can change it but I just wanted the general shape of what the retaining wall was gonna look like and it just is protecting the green from going out to the sea over here so I'm pretty happy with that there's still gonna be some changes here I'm not a hundred percent sold on almost anything up here at the moment like I like this bunker and I like this back section of green but it's really tricky to start messing around with the back of this green here because it's a good starting point for sure and we can start getting this hole looking a lot better before we make any decisions like that and get, get the fairway in and everything like that so that's what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna go in I'm gonna put the fairway down and I'm gonna put some of the waste bunkering that we have along all of these holes I'm gonna do that along this hole as well um, this one's gonna be a little bit different because the fairway is actually gonna go out to the edge of it so that will change the look away from this kind of beachy front look that I have over here on one and some of these other holes where the fairway doesn't quite get up to the water. That's what we're going for. I'm going to lay down a bunch of surfaces and we're going to try and see how this hole is actually going to play out. We're kind of just freestyling it here. So let's see how it goes. So truth be told with this hole, I'm really happy with everything up to this point in the fairway, right about in here. I, I like the way that the hole is shaping up. I like that this right side gives you a good angle in towards the green, and that's kind of the way the hole is designed to be played, give you a good reason to try and get a shot up into this region here. And then I like that you can hit driver out into here, and you might give yourself a worse angle in the green, but you've also only got like 50 yards. That's, that's kind of the idea of the hole. But as I'm looking at it, I just, <laughs> this green, I've been struggling with this hole a little bit because I just don't think that this green really suits, um, A, the, the entire hole. I, I think that I can make a better green. But more importantly, I don't think that this green fits in with the rest of the golf course because if you look at how big this green is, like there's a full three different sections here and it's very, very large and you've only got a wedge in your hand. But if you look at the rest of the course, that green is three times smaller than the green over there on 18. You look at this green, that's a pretty small green. Seven is a very, very small green. And that's the style I've been going in for this whole entire golf course. And really the only green that's pretty big is hole number nine. But you look at the green and it's three tiered and it's got a small section here. There's a lot of small sections. So I'm looking at this 18th green and it just doesn't fit in with the rest of the course. It doesn't I don't think it particularly plays very well and I I think I wanted to include this in the video because I think I'm just going to blow it up and start over again because it's really just not going the way that I envisioned it and 
The way I envisioned it more was I'd have this hazard here and then maybe another bunker in here and then the green is a pretty small green that goes kind of diagonally and you have a good angle from here but you're pretty blocked out from over here to all pins over on this left side of the green. So. What I think I'm gonna do is I, I'm just gonna blow it up and I'm gonna bring you guys, I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I do, but I'm gonna bring you guys back in once I have a better idea of how this green is going to look because it just needs some renovations and in this game you just you can't be afraid to blow everything up if you don't like the way it's going. Just start fresh and that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna blow everything up and I'll show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing and we'll see if we can get a green that looks a little bit more like some of the other greens on the course but also just plays a little bit better. So let's get in there and let's blow this thing up. So I did a lot of work off camera here on the 18th hole and it really, this hole has been really tough to get the way that I want it to look. And I, I eventually just had to stop recording and just start fiddling on my own because I was gonna have hours of footage if I didn't do all that stuff off camera because I just, I didn't know exactly what I wanted. But I think I've come finally to a solution to this hole and, and it's playing more of the way I want it and it's looking more of the way that I want it. So I haven't done any of the planting yet, so it's obviously gonna look much better than this once it's done. But I wanted to run through a few things that I finally came up with. So the original green was, this was the back of the green and it extended all the way up into here. And it was just too big of a green and didn't fit the course. So I was able to come up with a green that I think really um, strategically makes a lot of sense and also fits in with the golf course. So as I've said before, this layup is supposed to be, you're supposed to be rewarded for being able to get it down into this area right here. And if you look at it, you have an angle from right here, right on the 18 where the waypoint is, you have an angle at all, f well, three of the pins, maybe not necessarily this pin. And that's kind of the way I wanted it to because I wanted to be able to reward if we've got this pin on the front right, I want people to be rewarded for hitting it up into here and giving themselves the angle over there, hitting driver over this little, um, over this bay inlet thing. But we have a great angle from there to this back pin. From here to here, you have 10 yards, but from here to the pin, you've only got five yards and you're landing it on a downslope. So if you do try and hit driver and you bail it out over to here, all of a sudden you have this really difficult pitch shot landing on a downslope with water long not a shot that you want and you would be definitely punished for going with driver off the tee. Same to this pin, you've got very little room from this side, but from over here, you've got a very large angle to be able to keep it in here. You've got a ton of room going this way. And if you wanna get gutsy and take on the bunker, you can get a little bit closer by using this hill and having it kicked down to the pin. So you're really rewarded for those two pins for hitting it over here. Now for this pin, this is a little bit trickier from this side and in my opinion, if you were to play this hole, you would hit driver out to here and you actually give yourself a better shot in. So if you hit it to here, you see how everything right of this is going down towards this bowl and what it'll actually do is roll here and then it'll roll off the front of the green. And then all of a sudden you've got to chip over these two tiers and it's not an easy chip. In this game, it's probably pretty easy, but in real life, that chip would not be very fun. Not something that you'd really want to have going up over those tiers. But if you get it into here, you can have a wide open pitch shot, play it a little bit left, and you've got a really flat putt going towards this pin. 
And if you get a little bit more aggressive, you can bring this bull into play, but you don't ever really have to bring that bull into play. Whereas from over here, you have to hit it over this. You, there, there's no way of avoiding it. You just have to take on this pin with not much room behind it either. So you've got a really narrow area to land it in. So maybe laying up here isn't the best option to that pin. You kind of have to use your brain and decide, how do I want to play this shot into the green? And finally, of course, like I said earlier, if you hit it over into this area, you've got a very clear shot at this pin. You've got a lot of room, you've got the best angle. And if you hit it over here, that bunker is definitely in play. It's not really a hard shot because I mean, it's only like 92 yards from the center of that area. So you've still got a wedge in your hand and you have a backstop. This is probably the easiest pin in my opinion, but I, I think it's a cool looking pin, especially up, up against this water over here. Um, yeah, so I think I finally landed on what I want the strategy of this hole to be, and I think it's pretty well executed. I'm pretty happy with where we're at. I'm probably not going to make any changes, but man, that took a, <laughs> that took a long time to get uh, this green the way that I wanted it to. For whatever reason, I just co I couldn't figure it out, but that's the way designing in this game goes sometimes. You just have to keep fiddling and fiddling, and finally you land on something you like, and then all of a sudden the rest of the hole works itself out. So... That's kind of what I did for this hole, and then I put the retaining wall in. This will look a ton better once we have all these grasses here. It'll kind of block that ugly little grass area underneath, and it'll 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 look a lot better once we get the planting done. The final thing, of course, is as you can see now, I took away the water or uh, uh, the land. The land used to stretch from here, kind of down through here, and I don't know. It just didn't look quite right, and it's still something needs to go on this hill i don't know what it is but we're gonna figure that's gonna be uh, a future problem kind of near the end of the course when i'm trying to figure out what's gonna go on this little area because i think it looks really good as water i think it really gives that kind of infinity green feel where it, it runs off into the distance so you really feel like this green is narrow because instead of looking at land behind the green you're looking at water and I think it really adds to the hole. I think it makes it feel a lot more like a peninsula. This green is kind of jutting out into the ocean like that. And I think it looks way better off the tee too. As you can see here, you're on the tee box, you can see that water peeking up over the back of the green. And I think it gives it a real, it makes it feel tighter, even though it's not any tighter than it would be if there was land back there. I think it makes it feel tighter. And and that's the kind of look we're going for here. We, we want it to be visually stunning with the water behind it. And I think it does a really good job of that. So I'm pretty happy at this point. I, fi I finally figured out this whole, it took me a long time, but we're finally there now. We finally get to get into some planting, and there are a couple things I wanted to go over as well. Uh, first of all, I don't know if you've noticed, I did a little bit of work over here on the clubhouse area as I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I didn't really want to do this on camera because it's not that exciting, but I just want to fill out the area and make it look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more filled in, if that makes sense. I wanted this area to be finished. And it's not necessarily most exciting, but it's just something that helps me with the realism of the course. And I think it brings it to life. You got the little putting green over here. The way I envision, I, I do want to go over this, I guess. So you drive in through here and you're driving along and the way that you would enter this course, I, I, haven't, I haven't fixed these card paths, but I'll flatten them out here eventually. You'll drive along, you'll get that ninth hole to your left, you'll get the driving range and then you get the putting green. And as you drive, you can drop off your bag here at the bag drop. And then you've got the carts over here. <laughs> These carts are surprisingly expensive on the object meter. It's 0.1% it's per cart. So I wanted to put more carts in to make it look like a, a staging area, you know, where you'd put your clubs on the cart, but man, it just doesn't, <laughs> you can't do it. You can't do it in this game. It's way too expensive. So I've only put four carts out. And if I need some more planting meter at the end of this course, which it's kind of looking like I might, I might have to take one of these carts out. So, um, yeah, that's why there's only four carts over here. But you, you, you drop your bang off at the bag drop, and then you could take your car around and you could park it in the parking lot. You take this little route and you've got all these parking spaces here. I put a couple cars in, but again, these are really expensive, so I'm not using too many of them. If you were just dropping somebody off, you'd go through here, you'd take this, and this is the exit out. And uh, I, I think it's nice to have a good parking lot that makes sense. The thing I want to talk about here left of 18, though, is I'm actually thinking now I, I've been thinking a lot about this. I, I've had a lot of time between this episode just trying to figure out hole 18. And I moved the 13th tee back here. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm probably not going to plant any trees up to about this point right here on the left side. So it's gonna be a really open feel with the 18th hole and the left side of the 13th hole. And I think it'll make the course feel a little bit closer together. It'll make 13 certainly a lot more 
visually appealing than if it was um, if it was closed off with trees all the way here. It'll kind of give it that oceanfront view, even though it's not ne necessarily on the ocean. It'll give it that view and that feel. So I think that really helps hole number 13. But as we're planting 18 here, we're not going to have any trees over here. So it will feel very incomplete once I'm done planting this thing. But just know that once I get done with planting, hole 13 is going to go along here and it's going to make a lot of sense once we finish up hole 13 and it's going to look way better. But what I'm really going to focus on now is I'm going to plant all of this coastline here. I'm going to finish off the planting and this is kind of my final big plant of the golf course because this is a really object heavy area. It looks incredible. I'm really happy with how it looks, but it kills the plant meter. So I'm going to try and be as frugal as possible as I put all of these, uh, all of these grass and bushes in along this coastline because it has to go all the way from here, all the way down behind the green, in front of the green, into this little bay and all the way around over to here. And I'm going to go all the way down here to this set. Well, I'm not going to go quite all the way to the 17th green, but I'm going to get pretty close and we'll see how much object meter I have left at the end of this. I'm hoping it's not too low because we've only got, we've still got eight more holes and we're already at 56%. So we've got to be careful with how much plant meter we're using. So I'm going to get in, I'm going to plant this coastline and I'm going to finish up this left side. I'm going to put some of those, um, some of those sporadic bushes like I do over here. I'm going to put a bunch of those on this hole as well. And we should have a finished product at the end of this time lapse. So let's get into it. Here we go.
The planting on the 18th hole is finally finished. We got everything put in around the edges and we got this whole coastline planted. This was a lot of plant meter. As you can see, we're at 63.7%, so we don't have a ton of plant meter left for the remaining few holes here. But the good thing we have going for us is 13 is, a lot of the planting is gonna blend here with the 18th hole. So we can save a lot of plant meter there. I plan on doing the same thing with 10 and 11. We're gonna have to use some tips or uh, some hidden tricks here to get away with a lot of the plant meter that we have left. And uh, hole 12, another par three where a lot of the planting in the background is already done. There's gonna be nothing going back here. So hopefully we're gonna be able to save enough plant meter. I have some last resort ideas of removing some of these because these are really plant heavy over in here and removing some of these on the first couple holes where I went up maybe a little bit uh, a little bit too liberal with how much I was using, but we have some areas where we can save. So I'm hoping we're gonna be okay, but we're just gonna keep going with it and we're just gonna keep moving along here. But the 18th hole is finally finished. I did wanna mention one thing, this patio area. <laughs> If anybody has any ideas of what I can do, I think it looks okay right now, but I think there's definitely some things that I could do to improve all of this. And I'd love to hear what you guys think. So let me know what I can do here to kind of improve this little back patio area because that's kind of where, that's one of the main focal points of the hole, brings a little bit of interest into it off to the side over here. So let me know what you guys think I should do over here. I, I think this is a decent start, but I think there's definitely some more things, maybe some stairs right here. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But that's gonna do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Next episode, I think we're going to be tackling hole number 10. And another idea I had is I think I might do a stream here or maybe I just do three holes in one episode, do 10, 11, and 12. Try and get this thing done before 2K23 comes out. It's gonna be a bit of an ask, but we uh, th that would be a good way to get us going is getting 10, 11, and 12 done on a stream where I can kind of just go and flow things and not have to worry as much about filming it because cutting together some of these episodes also takes a little bit of time so I'd, I'd like to get this episode done and yeah that's kind of how i'm planning on doing it so make sure you subscribe if you haven't and thank you so much for watching guys have a good day